Hi everyone, welcome to our show. I'm Dan the Music Man. So glad you could join us today. It just happens to be a very special day and a very special week, Stouffville. It's Ontario Public Library Week, and thanks to the Lions Club of Stouffville, we are going to celebrate. Put up your hand if you like parties. Well, you are in the right place because we are having a big party today. We're having a bubble party for all the kids who love the Whitchurch Stouffville Library. If you have any bubbles at home, you should go get them. Here we go. Catch a bubble, catch a bubble, don't let your bubble blow. Bubble baths are lots of fun, and everyone likes bubble gum. Bubbles come and go. In a bubble dark, under bubble stars, swing a bubble guitar. Bubbles all around, bubbles up and down. Bubbles blowing all around. I love the bubbles, see the bubbles blowing up and down. Can you catch a bubble, catch a bubble like a butterfly? I can catch a bubble, catch a bubble, catch it if I try. In a bubble garden, under bubble stars, in a bubble guitar. Bubbles all around, bubbles up and down. Hi everyone, I'm back. Your library is like a window to the world, boys and girls. Every time you read a book, you begin a new adventure. We are going on an adventure right now all around the world. Everybody make a bridge above your heads. Let's get it rocking back and forth. And here we go. Everybody point north and south. We'll go east and west. We we'll go round and round and round the world. Here we go. Make a bridge. Make a bridge, make a bridge, make a bridge around the world. And everybody point north and south. We'll go east and west. We'll go round and round. Everybody point north and south We'll go east and west We'll go round and round and round the world To Australia And see a kangaroo To Africa We'll see a lion too To India Ah, oh, we'll see a great big long-nosed elephant Elephant So everybody make a, everybody make a bridge Make a bridge, make a bridge, make a bridge around the world And everybody point north and south We'll go east and west We'll go round and round and round the world Everybody point north and south We'll go east and west We'll go round and round and round the world To China And see a panda 
bear to the Antarctica. We'll see a polar bear to the desert where it's very hot. Ah, we might see a humpy back. Come on, camel. So everybody make a, everybody make a bridge. Make a bridge, make a bridge, make a bridge around the world. And everybody boy north and south. We'll go east and west. We'll go round and round and round the world. Everybody point north and south. We'll go east and west. We'll go round and round and round the world. Cause everywhere they love the children too. Just like me. And just like you, make a bridge, make a bridge, a bridge around the world, and lend a hand, try to understand. Can everybody make a, everybody make a bridge? Make a bridge, make a bridge, make a bridge around the world, and everybody point north and south. We'll go east and west. We'll go round and round. And round the world, everybody point north and south. We'll go east and west. We'll go round and round and round the world. Everybody point north and south. We'll go east and west. We'll go round and round and round the world. Everybody Make point north and south. We'll go east and west. Make we'll go round and round. Make a round the world. Everybody make point north and south. We'll go east and west. Make we'll a go round, make a round, make a round the world. Hi, everybody. Tim Holland here, the stunt ventriloquist. Now I am so excited to be a part of Library Week. Awesome. The, uh, the thing that I, the trick I like to do that's sort of like a book for library week is actually this blank slate. Because sometimes people ask me, how do you, you know, bring the characters to life in your show or, you know, make, you know, puppets look alive? And the thing I do is, uh, well, it's best explained with this demonstration. First of all, you got to start with a blank slate like this. This is a blank slate, nothing on it. It's kind of like your imagination, that it's wide open, full of possibilities. But with this blank slate, it can actually, you know, happen right in front of your eyes. I can draw a character on it. And the thing is, a lot of people don't understand, you've got to start with a really simple character. If you've seen Julius the turtle or Crackers the parrot in my show, they're pretty exciting. But this character, you know, starts pretty simple when you're, you know, really in development. This character won't, you know, be very lively. You might even say it's kind of boring. Who are you calling Thoring? But then you can add features to it. What? Well, I'm just talking about your, you know, being a little boring. I just got here. Well, I know, but they don't know that. Really? Yeah. We're just talking about character development, and uh, you're a character that's just eyes and a mouth. Oh. Yeah. It's a little creepy. Creepy? Yeah. That's what I said. Oh. Now, I'm going to give you some, uh, a face. What? I don't have a face? Well, you're just eyes and a mouth. Oh. So I'm going to give you a face. Okay. This one's going to be a little bit uh, simple as well, but if I draw an outline here, you'll start to look a little more like a person already. I look like a peanut. A what? A peanut. You look like a peanut. I do. Oh, no. Sorry about that. I feel allergic to some people. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, I'm going to give you a, a nose. What? But first, you need some eyebrows. What do you need? Well, eyebrows actually tell you a lot about how somebody feels. I feel nothing. No, you, you just don't have eyebrows. Really? Yeah. So we're going to give you some eyebrows. Oh, yeah? Yeah, these ones are going to be uh, a little bit... Simple as well. Why? Well, because they're the best eyebrows. They give you a very dramatic look, but these eyebrows are going to make you actually look like what, buddy? Well, they're going to make you look a little angry. I am angry. Well, you don't have to be that angry. I just do your eyebrows. Oh, I hate these stinking things. Well, sorry. I, I'm doing my best. It's, 
I'm an artist. What? Well, but I'm not a you know, very good uh, drawing artist. Well, it's the thought that counts, though. Not if you're an idiot. Hey, you're mean. What? Why you don't like these eyebrows? I'm going to erase your mouth. What? You can't erase my mouth. I'll get... Okay, you got to be nicer, though. All right, I'll be nicer. Here, I'll give you this mouth pad. All right, sorry. And you know what? I just should give you some different eyebrows. Yeah, before smoke comes out of my ears. Oh, smoke comes out of ears because you're angry? Yeah. Okay, well, you don't even have ears. What? Okay, don't get even angry. Ah! I'll give you some uh, different eyebrows. These are going to gonna be a little pointier, actually, like this. And now you look surprised. Oh, wow. See? Surprised. I can't believe you did that. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Wow. These eyebrows make me look so surprised. I know. But, uh, you know, we, we can't go on forever without, uh, without hair. What? Yeah, because hair, um, and this is a little bit of a stereotype, everybody. What? What's that? Well, the stereotype would be like um, if you see something so often, you start to, you know, make an assumption about it. Like what? Well, like if you saw somebody with long hair, you might think something in particular. Really? Yeah. So like if I draw long hair on you, um, you know, if somebody saw you, their first impression might be that you had a voice like this. Like what? Wait, no, I thought you were going to have like a girl voice because you had long hair. That's a stereotype. Wow, yeah, you're right. I'm a biker from the 70s. What? Yeah, check out my ride. <laughs> yeah, I guess lots of people can have long hair. You that. Okay, well, I'm going to, I'll give you a, a little bow here in your hair and make you into a little girl. That'll, that'll be a little bit more of a stereotype. It'll make you into a, a little girl instead. All right, fine. <laughs> See, now you have a little girl voice and you're a happy little girl. Whatever. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to give you, um... A nose. Oh, wow. Yeah, see? What other girl wants? Yeah, nice nose, middle of your face. Isn't that where they go? Yeah, kind of, but we'll give you a nice nose here. This is going to be uh, right like that. See, isn't that perfect? That's not a nose. That's a nose? No, it's an ear. It's an ear? Yeah, look at it. <laughs> I, it's supposed to be a nose. What, can I only smell to the left? Okay, you do have a point. It's kind of going one direction. <laughs> This isn't a nose. Okay, well, I, I'll give you a new nose. Thank you. Okay, I'll give you this, uh, you, you know, this lesson too, everybody. Is that you got to start with the details when you want to do something right. Like what? Well, if I want to make a good nose, you got to start with the nostrils. What? Yeah, so the nostrils, you'd start with the, you know, in the middle again, but you make some nice nostrils that go out from the center. That looks like a, like a, and then uh, you, you draw just the last details, and now it's a, a great nose. That's a pig nose. It's not. It's not a pig nose exactly. You just. You're. You're. I think you're exaggerating. No, it's a pig nose. Look at it. I'm a pig girl. You're no a big girl. <laughs> okay, you just snorted. It just happens when I laugh. What? <laughs> okay, you're just hamming it up now. Hamming it up. Get it? <laughs> Okay, I, you know what? I think this has gone a really weird direction. I love it. Okay. If there was snow coming out of my ears now, it'd smell like bacon. <laughs> That's a good one. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to erase you, though. Erase me? Yeah, I'm going to have to erase you. I, I, um, but this is kind of a cool trick. What's that? Well, I'm going to erase you, but then you can sing. What? And it'll still seem like you're here, even though you disappear. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's kind of a cool, you know, last trick. Um, now, I'm going to erase you. You start to hum. Hum? Yeah, make a noise, like, with your mouth. La, 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 la. No, you got to make a noise with your mouth closed. That's humming. Oh. La, 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 la. Well, that's pretty good. La, 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 la. Oh, is there anything you want to say before you go, though? Oh, I want to say, uh, thanks so much. And, uh... Pigs are pretty smart. Pigs are pretty smart? Yeah. I keep hearing that. You know, yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, erase you. And don't do stereotypes. Oh, yeah, stereotypes aren't nice, but this is a library crowd. I think they'll, they'll get that. Um, we should always never judge a book by its cover. And, uh, yeah, and, and always have an open mind. All right. So you start humming now. This is cool magic trick here. <laughs> 
Yeah, you're disappearing. <laughs> Last snort. Pretty cool, eh, guys? Thank you so much to all of the people that are celebrating Library Week and everybody at the Stouffville Library. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah, you're still there. <laughs> all right. Hi there. We are Brent and Sarah, and thanks to the Whitchurch Stouffville Public Library, we are happy to be bringing you a magic show. You better believe it. The library and some other great performers like us have all come together to put in an awesome show just for you. So kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. Your entertainers have performed on stages and television across North America. They've also traveled the world performing on cruise ships. But today, they are here for you. Get ready for Brent and Sarah! Yes, we are Brent and Sarah, a husband and wife team of magicians. Yes, one of us is beautiful, talented, and glamorous, and the other one is Sarah. Wait, what? Sarah also happens to be one of the very few female magicians in existence. Well, that's true. And she's the type of magician who enjoys the finer things in life, like grade A, silky smooth, three-ply toilet paper, and candlelit dinner. When Sarah was young, she often dreamed of being a princess, living in a castle, enjoying each dinner by candlelight. But that dream didn't last long. Instead, she became a magician. She lives in a townhouse, and she eats frozen dinners from the microwave. She made that princess dream totally disappear. That's Sarah. Yes, thank you. Now, if I may, I would love to introduce all of you to my husband, Brent. At six feet five inches tall, he's really more a tree kind of man, but he's a valuable part of the act. Now, I may be the better magician, but what Brent lacks in skills, intelligence, or charisma, he makes up for with his childlike mind. Thank you. Okay, well, what I mean by that is that Brent, your mind is full of imagination. Right, is it? Uh, yeah, see, growing up, he was always more interested in the dangerous types of magic, like cutting someone in half or his personal favorite, sword swallowing. Now, growing up, he was not allowed to own a sword, and so he had to improvise. I guess it was no real surprise when he first did this. Uh, yeah. Okay, now listen, it might not look like it, but Brent is a professional. So, nobody try this at home. No. Uh, <laughs> that's disgusting. <clears throat> yeah, but that's me. I'm Brent. And I'm Sarah. And we want to know... Who's, who's ready, ready for, for a magic, magic show? show? Hey! You better be, because that is literally what we're here to do. That's right, and on a special day like today, I don't know if you can feel it, but there is literally magic in the air. Yes, in fact, before the show started, we went around and we gathered up some of that magic in the air and put it inside this little box. And if you believe in magic, even just a little bit, and you're going to love this.
Yes, where there's magic involved, dreams tend to come true, which is no surprise that last night I actually had a dream about this show, and you were there. Well, Sarah was there too, but she's in most of my dreams and all of my nightmares. This particular dream was a weird one, though, because Sarah, the proud Canadian that she is, was standing here with a box of Tim Hortons Timbits, but inside that box, there were no miniature donuts. No, no, no. Instead, she had jumbo playing cards, and each card had strange markings on them. There was one, two, three, four, five of them. She then removed one of those cards, threw it into the box, snapped her fingers on the top, and magically somehow still had one, two, three, four, five jumbo playing cards. And in the dream, you were so impressed, you pumped your fist in the air and shouted, Brent and Sarah. Hear that from here. Um, but that's okay because Sarah decided to try it again. In that dream, she had one, two, three, four, five jumbo playing cards. She then removed not one, but two of those playing cards, dropped them in the box, snapped her fingers on the top, and magically somehow still had one, two, three, four, five jumbo playing cards. And you were so impressed, you pumped your fist in the air and shouted, Brent and Sarah. Better. I still think we could do much better than that. So you know what? Because Sarah decided to do it one more time in the dream, we'll do it one more time. She had one, two, three, four, five jumbo playing cards. She then removed, I kid you not, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine jumbo playing cards. It snapped her fingers over top and magically still had one, two, three, four, five jumbo playing cards. And just as you were about to pump your fist in the air and shout, Brent and Sarah, my alarm went off. And I woke up and we realized it was just a dream because the box was empty. The cards came together and you were so impressed you pumped your fist in the air and shouted, Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's yes. the stuff, that's the stuff. You are the audience we've been dreaming of. Thank you for making our dreams come true.